News First, face to face with Charlotte Benedict. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Sri Lanka is at a crossroads right now. Next year, the general public of Sri Lanka will be given, hopefully, will be given an opportunity to choose which direction Sri Lanka should take for the future. Sri Lankans were given this option on multiple times before and it turns out that we always squandered these opportunities which resulted in the situation or the plight that Sri Lankans are facing today. To discuss these matters and much more of course uh, we've got with us today parliamentarian from the National People's Power Movement Dr. Harini Amrasuria. Uh, a very good evening doctor and welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Harini, now the NPP is being fielded or put forward as this brand new force of leaders who are against corruption, who are against everything that is bad and evil in Sri Lanka. And of course, um, one cannot deny uh, that the, f the following of the NPP or the number of people who have started to believe in your policies, uh, whatever they may be, has uh, taken a certain uptick. Uh, but, uh, but Dr. Harini, there are still those who don't really know where the NPP stands. Because taking a look at the history of how the NPP was formed, initially it was the JVP, members of an armed struggle uh, due to certain political reasons, of course, including the suspension of that very political party. Um, then fast forward 30 years uh, ahead, uh, they were in government uh, with uh, former President Chandrika Bandaranaika Kumaratunga, uh, during which time they had about 16 seats in parliament. Fast forward a couple of years down the line, uh, the JVP was down to six members in parliament, and finally now three. So, speaking uh, specifically on where the NPP stands on this spectrum of policies that Sri Lankans are now being asked to decide, where do you want to stand? Where does the NPP stand? Well, I think the policies that we have presented hmm. are based on a clear analysis of the current situation in the country and what, be, how best to resolve it, hmm. right? So that's our main aim, that the, the problems facing the country today in the political sphere, in the economic sphere, hmm. uh, how do we address those? So, hmm. what is our uh, what is our vision about what a, what a society or a government run by the NPP? Hmm. We, what would that society look like? Hmm. Right? And for us, it's a democratic society. It's a society in which people participate in decision making, hmm. where there is engaged citizenship and hmm. there is space for that. Hmm. There is equity. Hmm. There's respect for all, hmm. and there's a and there are there's a government that actually uh, represents the people hmm. and uh, f uh, serves the people, hmm. and there's a state sector that's uh, that's efficient and hmm. strong and service oriented, hmm. and there's a private sector that's ethical hmm. uh, and a private sector that understands its social responsibility. Hmm and partners with the people and with the government in taking mm. this country forward, mm. right? So, uh, I think we we resist being put into any, any sort of box and said, mm. you are this, mm. right? Because I think the situation in the country demands that we don't we don't look for solutions from within a box, hmm. right? And also because the, the, the kind of categories that we worked with for so long have become so meaningless in this current situation where nobody seems to really know what any of those categories mean anymore. Hmm. For us, it's a much more pragmatic approach at looking at what works for this country, looking at what it, where, how we got to where we are historically hmm. and addressing those concerns. Hmm. So our platform, as you know, is very much anti-corruption, hmm. pro-democracy -democra and uh, social justice. Hmm. So I think that's the basis on which, uh, which we have formulated most of our policies. So we want to see a society where um, where where everyone is able to participate hmm. economically, hmm. politically, socially. Hmm. No one is 
marginalized, mm. no one is excluded, and uh, one where human potential can be developed as uh, as freely as possible hmm. right that's the kind of society that we envisage you put a label on it we don't want to doctor um, looking at what uh, really the, the views of the general public uh, when we do go out and then speak with people um, there is this uh, age-old saying that says you know the known devil yes. is better than an unknown angel yes so I think it's quite right to say that the NPP mm. um, I might the unknown stand, devil. is the on is the unknown angel unknown angel is the oh. unknown angel but as the saying goes dr. Harini you know the known devil is yeah. better than the unknown yeah. angel to some people mm. in the general public when they look at uh, one political camp they know how they are going to steal they know how they uh, which mm. which areas would they use mm. would it be mm. selling of national assets mm. or would it be you know tender fraud mm. uh, what not uh, when they look at the other political campaign they would know that okay this is how they are going to be corrupt this is how they are going to um, promote their uh, political allies and their business uh, friends so on and so forth uh, but they don't really know how the JVP is going to function in that sense mm. Uh, for the simple reason that the JVP has not yet been in mm. power mm. and uh, unfortunately and coincidentally also mm. that's kind of the slogan that a lot of uh, current mainstream politicians from other political mm. parties mm. attempt mm. to uh, capture the general public on saying mm. you know us mm. we've done a lot of bad things but it's not as bad mm. as what they are going to do mm. if they come to power mm. How do you respond to that? No, I, I think it's a fair point that you're making in that one of the problems that people have with us is that they don't know what a government, an NPP-led government will look like. Because right? the most number of JVP and PP uh, mm. closely knitted parliamentarians that have been in parliament mm. is about 16. No, 39. 39, all right. Yeah. But still. <laughs> yeah. 39 right uh, so and, and there were four ministers at one stage mm. for one year there were four ministers but so it's not that unknown right but it's still relatively unknown given the 70 plus years of uh, independence plus. yeah well yeah, but, the part, the, yeah, but the party has only been in the, the, the JVP has been in existence for 50 odd years and for no, one so year you've had four ministers uh, yes and the NPP is only for four, four mm. years uh, for we formed it so we come back to the conclusion that that people don't really know what no, the government but we are a new party like. right okay. so I think the people have to make a choice and they are making a choice right uh, I, I'd be between I, I, you know I, I think there's a he, there's a real movement now mm. that is a rejection of the past a rejection of this the establishment mm. a desire for a different uh, a different look a different mm. feel mm. Right? People don't want to go back to the status quo. I mean, that's the that's the resistance that you see to the current government also, mm. right? Because it's the same old, same old, and they've seen this over and over again, right? So there's a real desire for something new, and I think that's where we come along, right? Mm. Uh, we are not tainted mm. by the by the evils that are besetting uh, those who have been in power, mm. right? And that is that is who we are. Mm. right so I think people have to take us as that right and the the opposition uh, the parties in who are opposed to us do two things one is to say they are as bad as us right? they, they meaning you us right that you are they, as bad as that, them that you know <laughs> that's one effort they make mm. the NPPC they are also just like us that's mm. one thing they try to say mm. that the NPP is no different Mm. because the fact that we are different is what is hurting them the most mm. and the second thing is as you said to say they don't you know we don't know what they are they'll be worse than us mm. right and here they kind of also point to Gotabe Rajapaksa and say look what happened there trying to use that to their trying advantage trying to use <laughs> that to an advantage but the response we have here is that we are not a party that is based on an individual we are not a party that is uh, centered around a personality of a of a leader mm. right we are much more of a of a collective force mm. where uh, whether uh, where, where, whether it's how we discuss and come up with our policies mm. how we implement our policies how we take decisions as a pol political movement this mm. is very very collective mm. right so we take collective responsibility for what mm. we do right and I think that's our strength 
hmm. because we bring in uh, so many people into our decision making process and our decision ma making process is is transparent and very uh, very um, democratic mm -hmm. right so no one person can determine that this is how it's going to be that mm -hmm. is our strength right mm -hmm. and also the strength uh, our strength lies in the uh, the the ethics we follow as a party mm -hmm. right the the rules that we are, we are all bound by whether mm -hmm. it's the general secretary of the party or the you know the newest member of the party or the newest person to collaborate with us we all have to abide by the same code of conduct mm. right with regard to our behavior our practice right uh, how we engage with the public mm. how we present ourselves to the public mm. right so we are bound by that code of conduct and that's pretty strong in our group because like i said uh, we are very much a collective group who take responsibility for each other also and for mm. each other's actions right mm. so all i can say is judge us by what we do mm. right how we how we behave whether mm. in parliament or outside parliament mm. right uh, you talked about the kind of patronage politics of the other parties mm. right look at look at us mm. and see you know how how we function as a party mm. right how the positions in our party are uh, allocated or mm. how the decision making uh, process takes place mm. right so judge us by our practice mm. not by what obviously our opponents <laughs> are going to say in order to uh, score points against us i mean don't take their word mm. talk to us and judge us by our practice uh, now dr harini this is only the second show of face to face and yesterday when i was speaking with uh, professor charitha herath uh, he cautioned the general public about hating all politicians mm. and saying that we need a brand new group now the npp is looking to establish a government the npp is looking to bring about or to appoint the first president from the npp I, that that is the goal is it not our goal is to form a government and if the pre and uh, the presidential election has to come first so we will certainly be hoping mm. that our con candidate wins the presidential election as well so dr harini for that to happen mm. it would require a substantial number of current parliamentarians or let's say those who are in the political game at the moment mm. to be removed mm -hmm. and for brand new people mm. brand new blood brand new politicians mm. to a certain sense being in a position of authority they might have been engaged in politics for a long time but this is the first time that they are going to get authority mm. to do mm. what they can do mm. for the people of course mm. um but um so this kind of contradicts with what professor charitha herat said yesterday so how how does that quite go along can we can we expect something good for the nation by throwing out a majority of the politicians who are currently in power who know how things work who know what to do where to do when to do the back doors on how to get things done would that really work see i think that is precisely the problem shalan the way how things were done right and we need to change that Mm. we have to change those back door negotiations mm. and that old way of doing things mm. right so that is precisely the point mm. right so a, an npp government uh will not be continuing in the same way will not be uh doing things the way that it was done in the past mm. right our our intention is to to run this country differently mm. right so for instance uh to give you an example say th we, when we appoint ministers uh we will appoint for each ministry also like an advisory council mm. right who will be advising the minister on the de decisions that ha that he or she has to make so mm. that he or she is not unilaterally just able to go off on a limb and take whatever decisions he want so mm. that uh, that process of accountability mm. will always be ensured mm. right this is why we are also even now what we are doing is strengthening people's participation in the decision making process because mm. one for us one of the strongest safeguards 
uh, against um, corruption but also to, to ensure good governance mm. is to make sure that citizens are part and are able to participate in the decision making process. Mm. So we have been for the past two years talking to people at the ground level, mm -hmm. forming people into groups, giving them the kind of education on citizen engage engagement, mm -hmm. right? So that they are much more empowered then to, to hold their representatives accountable, mm -hmm. right? And this is something we want to guarantee through a constitutional uh, change as well. Where well, you have this uh, to some extent in uh, the US, mm -hmm. in where, where even local government decisions have to be publicly discussed with the community, community mm. get a say in like town hall debates. Like town hall debates, uh, the uh, 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 local communities get to observe how their councils are run. Their mm. budgets are transparent. Mm. Their, uh, uh, they can question uh, what what mm. happens, right? So we we want to build in those kinds of systems so that mm. your elected representative is far more accountable to to their constituency, mm. right? We want to introduce things like the right to recall. Mm. Right, so that uh, where a where a group of constituents feel that the, their elected representative is not delivering, mm. they are able to uh, follow a certain process whereby they can recall that person mm. and call for a uh, for a fresh election. Mm. Right, so you have to build in systems, mm. right, build in processes whereby your elected representative is held accountable. Mm. Right, and to do that, mm. you need also a very different kind of relationship with the citizen be mm. with, with, between your elected representative and the citizen mm. right so what we are what we are actually hoping for is a new kind of social contract mm. right where the conversation and the relationship mm. is entirely different your ele your leaders are not some sort of privileged group that's kind of above you know on another pl plane mm. right we want to bring that down Hmm. Right, we we want to make that relationship much more uh, engaged and much more equal. Hmm. Right, so we will not be doing how uh, things the way it has been done in the past, and that's precisely why we need new people who are hmm. willing to uh, function in that way and be held accountable and be open to that kind of uh, hmm. system of governance. Uh, Dr. Harini, do you think that <coughs> politicians who are currently in the system? or these political um, individuals, of course, that, that you uh, criticize, so are capable of changing their ways. Do you think they can change? <laughs> I think uh, it's like this. I don't, we, we, I don't want to discount the possibility that anyone is not ab able to redeem themselves. Okay. Right? I mean, come on. Hmm. Okay. Uh, however, people who have uh, benefited illegally from this system hmm. will find it very difficult to to give that up, hmm. right? And uh, Shalin, I want to say this. I mean, this is something I've been thinking about quite uh, quite seriously the past f ever since I got into sort of active full time politics. Is the allure of power? Right, how power can be a very seductive mm. force, right? And that doesn't lie just in your potential for corruption. Mm. Your like the, you know, it's it's not only that. It's not only the kicks, kickbacks and the uh, corruption per se. It's that aura of power and what that does to you. Mm. What happens when you walk into a room and you mm. have people? treating you in a different way mm. where you never have to walk into a shop like anyone else and or get, get on public transport or walk on the mm. streets normally or be uh, or just walk on your own without an entourage of people surrounding mm. you right that takes you a, that takes you away from reality and elevates you in a into a, another sort of realm mm. and people get addicted to that mm. right so that is why it is so important to have systems in place that keep you grounded, mm. right? That doesn't let power seduce you to that level, right? And I think what makes it difficult for people, for 
people in power currently to change is because that is the political system, the culture that has sustained them for so long. Hmm. Right? So when for the first time in 2022, when people just rose up and rejected that kind of political behavior and that hmm. political culture, they just couldn't take it. Hmm. Right? Because that's the only way they knew or know how to be in power. They actually withdrew from all of their functions and they just yeah. Yeah. stopped. They stopped and also there, there's an there's a element of uh, real anger against mm -hmm. people who challenge that way of behavior. Hmm. Right? Uh, so I think that's, that, is the, that is what's going to make, that is what is making it really difficult hmm. for those in power to let go. Hmm. Right? And that's why you need a discipline within a party mm. and an ethical <coughs> code within a party to mm. make sure that, you know, that element of corruption doesn't become normalized. Dr. Harini, we're in the final few minutes of the show now. There is a tendency among the general public also to be taken away by this aura of mm. power that you spoke about. Um, people look at these leaders and they say, oh my gosh, mm. look at the way they walk, look at the way they carry themselves, mm. look at the poise. And there are those who vote for that poise, for that aura. And um, it's of course, like you said, difficult for these individuals to change. Likewise, it's difficult for the general public yes. to change. There are those who I know who would go to the vo polling booth saying, I'm going to vote for, you know, against corruption, but still vote for the same person that he voted the last time, mm. just out of habit. Mm. So do you think that Sri Lanka is ready for the kind of change that you are proposing? Uh, Absolutely. I have Chris. every confidence that Sri Lanka is not just ready, but is, is going to make that change. Mm. Because I think you can't discount the changes that have happened in the last two two odd years in our country. I, I mean, and, and, and politicians and political parties who do not recognize that change, they are going to be the losers, right? The biggest losers. The biggest losers, <laughs> <laughs> right? That because today the citizens of this country are far ahead of their politicians mm -hmm. and politicians have to catch up and it is those who will catch up and who will march alongside those citizens who have now changed and who are demanding change mm. who will be winning the elections next year. Mm. One final question uh, Dr. Harini Amrasuria. By the looks of it um, you too may be in the running for candidacy <gasps> of the presidency from the NPP. Are, are you ready doctor? You are flogging a <laughs> dead horse here Charlotte. We have declared who our candidate is and that is Anra Kumar Adisanayaka and he is our candidate and there hmm. is n that is it. Hmm. There is no doubt about it. He is the leader of our party and he, I just want to say this. Think about this. Hmm. Two, two and a half years ago, Charlene, if you were interviewing me, hmm. you would never ask me about what it would be like to be in power. Hmm. Right? Because we were the 3% party. Hmm. We, got, we have got to a point today where now our op opponents are running scared and tarnishing, trying to tarnish us at every point because they recognize us as the threat now, mm -hmm. that we are potentially the next, uh, forming the next government, right? I think the c most common argument is the fact that the economic crisis is a result of the JVP burning down buses in the 70s. Yes, as opposed to the massive <laughs> amounts of corruption that have uh, taken place uh, uh, since 88. Quite 89, a sound 80, argument. Uh, since 88, a very sound <laughs> argument, yes, indeed. But so we wouldn't be having this conversation if, and, uh, if, if not for the change that has taken place. And as a leader, Anura has has been a real part of that change. He's mm. the person who got us to this position, mm. right? I mean, he has a huge role. He has a he played a huge role in getting us mm. to this. So he he well deserves and is fully qualified mm. to be our presidential candidate. One final question, Dr. Amrasuri, if you don't mind. Um, we've seen countless governments give massive promises, come into power, uh, completely default on all of those promises and uh, then probably be turned over or, or toppled by uh, another political party and then uh, again come back uh, into power five years after that. 
Um, any assurances on, on this same thing will not happen to the JVP and the JVP would not be just another cog in this uh, deadly wheel. Yeah, because we won't be running that same wheel, hmm. right? It is a different wheel hmm. that we will be setting in place so uh, I mean that's the only thing I can say I, I fully understand why all these questions are being asked of us because we are looking at it from this current system hmm. but that is not what we will be hmm. right so yeah we, we, we hope I, I, that that's we want to break that cycle hmm. right we want to break that cycle and have a have a have a kind of country where you know it's it's being in politics and being a politician becomes something that is uh, the aspiration of the of uh, of some of the best people in this country so much like um, Daenerys Targaryen in the Game of Thrones you want to break the yes. wheel. Thank exactly. you very much, Dr. Hirani Amarasuri, for joining us on our program today. Uh, and of course, uh, the general public of Sri Lanka are, are expecting change. But to bring about that change, the general public should first be willing to change themselves. Until we meet again, take care and God bless. News first, face to face with Shalom Benedict. Devalavan pa unave vele mata niu vele. Aye inne ting ting. Kule karu me dekho mega. E min de baadar. Abhi man gaya tur daam me mera mahav sambandhya ne. Mangya ne kisi me sakya ne ke liye kuch uncle bani the. Me kaha hum kaha? Oh ka koi dhani ayin sakar. Oh tamai me feel de ke inne katta kairat ka vetta pitala ankura. Jai the wada deyang me bita ye. नील पबलो अद रात्रि नवेटा सिरस टेली तिरेन ए मे उने आटेला इटा अरे इसको तो देखा मैं तेरी रेटु क्या लगा ले एक उस लगा ले पूर्ति ले वाले माउस बंदे दांग वे हिम्मे में चलता क्या सोल्ड कोण में नून अतरे नहीं होगी पोट्टे कहानी फागे इंदा पुरी सिंगे पसे पन्ना नितने अन्य वारे मस्त वे तना के It's so important. Ceylon Cinema is the best cinema in the world, and we have also produced our own data uh, to prove that. We believe that timely ele elections are important to any democracy. Atrocities, violence, corruption. So th there is a culture of politics that in Sri Lanka that we are faced with, and so therefore women hate entering politics. Uh, the United States of America is going into election season just next year. Um, sadly, Sri Lanka hasn't seen elections for a while. The People's Platform. Me bandhne meet wada parisang karagan. Me sare mangoya vage Paul ji vite vinasakaran ke neko kohmati wad lang karagan. Then the my party ka patangan ne. Mage sathu te mage vishwasi mage adar ne. Mathe hamde ma pahu oni. Oh, na mangwa te poliya tikka mahapau dinu. Kasaade hamar chari trak na sampurna. Thank you so much, Maggie. Do you get very negative about it? Make or not. Other Ratri Navayi Theatre. Sirus Delhi Train. Baane mehla gaya the. Abhi man restaurant ke athura ke hi lane. Aap hamad dena karte. Aaj theatre vechhe goda 